Not only are we excited to recognize the Alumni Award recipients today, but also to welcome home the 50-year class reunion, the class of 1973. We're starting the program at this time so that we can adjourn timely and take advantage of the activities that we have scheduled for this afternoon. Those activities include, of course, a parade, a tailgate at the Alumni House, and a great football game at 3 o'clock. So the parade is coming up at noon today, and I'm excited about that parade. I haven't been in that parade since 1976. <laughs> I'm Ron Bergfeld, class of 1977, and I am a proud Alumni Association board member. I look forward to those meetings each month. We meet by Zoom, and we've got alumni on the board from across the nation, coast to coast. We've got members from Arizona, Maryland, Colorado, Missouri, Minnesota, and several of us from Iowa. We've got younger alumni, some that graduated as recently as five and 10 years ago. And there are some old timers on the board, such as myself. Some of us went to school in Fayette, and some never attended a class at Fayette. You know, we've got the wonderful off-campus opportunities. One thing we do all have in common, though, is we all support Peacock Blue. When I graduated in 1977, and there are a lot of people here that went in the mid-70s, you know we didn't have a lot of students on campus at that time. Some might view that as a negative, but for me it was a fantastic opportunity. I was able to participate in so many more functions, programs, activities than I could have possibly uh, attended or been involved with at a larger institution. For example, I was involved in student government, I was a class officer in two academic fraternities, as well as our senior class. I was an RA right over here at Garby Hall. And I was on the speech team, and I acted in two plays having zero prior acting experience whatsoever. <laughs> the small school afforded that, me that opportunity. So Upper Iowa gave me the opportunity to be a big fish in a small pond. I tried to attend this alumni banquet each year. I really enjoy this, this brunch and this particular activity. It's great to see the class of 1973 back after 50 years. It's great to see them reunite. And we are proud as Peacocks to welcome and re recognize the Alumni Award recipients today. I'm pleased to be joined on stage today. My co MC is Tom Petchy. Tom and I both attended Upper Iowa in the mid-70s. We actually overlapped for one year, but didn't know each other at all back then. And we now serve together on the Alumni Association Board of Directors. Tom. Thank you, Ron. As Ron mentioned, I'm Tom Petchy, the class of 1975. So I'm kind of the old guy on the stage. Um, I'd like to welcome all the alumni here this morning to our annual Upper Iowa Alumni Awards and Honor Class Brunch. It just doesn't seem right, however, that I'm going to be in that 50-year class reunion two years from now. Where is the time gone? You know, As I always say, age is a number and mine's unlisted. Uh, I'm one of many local Fayette boys, girls, um, that came to Upper Iowa. And I always tell people that I went to high school on the west side of town and I moved to the east side of town to go to college, like Fayette's a really big city. <laughs> but it does give me a different perspective, having been around the university my entire childhood. I do have the distinct privilege of being the secretary of the Alumni Association Board of Directors. I think it's very important to give back. Um, give back to Upper Iowa for all that was given to me as a student and as a graduate of this fine university. I know that I would not be where I am today without my degree from Upper Iowa. The Alumni Association gives me an opportunity to work with some really great alumni, some that I went to college with and some that are much younger than me. But we all have the same goal, 
to help support Upper Iowa as we move forward in an ever-changing world. They always say that the only given today is change. But one thing that has not changed since I was a student at Upper Iowa is that the goal for Upper Iowa is to develop our students to become productive and successful in whatever field they choose to follow. I'm proud of the rich history of Upper Iowa that our alumni have developed throughout the United States and internationally for that matter. We have a great tradition of success which is one of the reasons I'm so proud to represent all of you on the Alumni Board of Directors. It's truly an honor for me to be here today to recognize some of our outstanding, successful alumni. Again, let me welcome you to, back to Upper Iowa, and I hope that all of you have a great time and homecoming weekend, and I look forward to being with you more as the activities continue this weekend. Ron? At this time, it is our pleasure to recognize the 50-year reunion class. Here to give an official welcome to the class of 1973, please welcome to the stage our golden anniversary alumni speaker, Steve Harms. Good morning. And what a great looking crew this is. It's my privilege to be up here today and uh, welcome the class of 73. Uh, a little bit about me, I grew up all the way 17 miles west of Fayette, down in Sumner. And uh, played all kinds of sports over there and upon graduating in 1969, I wanted to become a teacher, become a coach, and also uh, have a lot of fun. And I accomplished all of those over here at Upper Iowa. But it was a, uh, my journey here was kind of uh, interesting because I wanted to play football. And uh, being from Sumner, I was right in the middle of Wartburg, Upper Iowa, and Luther. And uh, Luther came to see me the first time and uh, wanted to uh, have me come up there to play football for the, for the Norsemen. So they convinced me to do that. So I went through the process, enrolled, was accepted, had a uh, financial package of, I don't remember what the, the number was, and I was ready to become a uh, uh, head to Luther. To be real honest, the facilities up there were a little bit better. The trout fishing up there was a little bit better. <laughs> and I could still get back to the Sumner area to shoot pheasants. So it was a perfect match there also. But uh, my senior year, I got a call from the principal's office and he said a couple guys wanted to see me. So I said, okay, fine, what did I do now? <laughs> but uh, went to the principal's office and there was uh, Mike Olson and Jim Kilbreth, the two football coaches at Upper Iowa, head coach and assistant coach. And they wanted me to, to come to Upper Iowa. And I said, well, I already committed to, to Luther but, uh, you know, I keep my options open. I, I loved Upper Iowa even then. My dad and my uncle, Becky's uh, dad went to school here and uh, played for Doc Dorman. Uh, Mal was a little All-American. My dad was a captain of the, I think, a 1944 football team and uh, uh, played under uh, Doc Dorman. So I had a connection over here at Upper Iowa too. So I said, okay. Send me what my, give me a financial package and I'll make a decision. And they did that and believe it or not, the financial package at Upper Iowa was $100 more than what I was going to get at Luther. <laughs> you know, and back then, $100 was a lot of money. So uh, I decided to become a, a peacock and uh, have been proud, uh, have been a proud peacock ever since. So that's kind of my story there. But just a little, uh, you know, one of our uh, Republican candidates for uh, president, uh, Nikki Haley, has been talking about a competency test for anybody over 75 in Congress and, uh, of course, the president also. So I thought about that and knowing some of the, the people that were in our class, I thought maybe it'd be good to uh, check the competency of this crew now, <laughs> especially after 50 years. So uh, I got a little, I got help from uh, Andrew's team to, 
to give me a few facts, but uh, you can tell me the number of, of uh, graduates that we had in, in 1973. How many? 229. Of that, and this is a, the number that I'm, I'm Andrew, nothing uh, say bad against you, but uh, his, his records indicate 137 are currently still alive. Out of 229 to 137. Now that sounds like that's a pretty good, uh, a pretty tough number, but uh, that's what you came up with. So out of that, who was a homecoming queen in 1973? Janice Jones, Nedelecki. He married Richard in 1972. Class president. Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to look over here to my uh, buddies on the Foxes, because evidently two of the illustrious Foxes were on the student government, which is hard to believe. <laughs> I know they were very popular guys, but I didn't think they were that popular. I thought there had to be some type of criteria that would weed them out. But Jim Fuzzy Clark and, and Jim Parsons were supposedly on student government, and I don't, know if, I don't know if you guys remember who the president was or not. You know, as I said, they never attended a meeting. That's my boys. <laughs> Fo yeah. football, football record our senior year, four, five, and one. We started out uh, with four wins and one tie against Simpson, but then lost five in a row. But uh, I, I blame that on uh, one guy, Rick Gerber, and he's not here. I don't think I saw him come in. But we were playing Wartburg, and uh, uh, Gerber broke his leg up there at Warburg, and uh, after we lost him, we lost five games in a row. So, uh, so I can't believe Gerber's not here. So we had a four, four, five, and one. Upper Iowa president at that time. Aldrich Paul. Aldrich Paul. We currently have seven Hall of Fame members in the class of 73. I'm proud to be one of them, Jim Parsons, Larry Borst over there, Al Martindale, who was a trainer, uh, Rick Knipper, Dick Ingvall, and Mike Exline. So I would say, I, I'm not sure, and we probably don't have a record, but I would say we probably have more Hall of Famers out of that illustrious class than any other class. So to, to the Hall of Famers, congratulations. 54% of the class has made a contribution to, to Upper Iowa since graduation. 54%. So thank you for those. And uh, for those that uh, haven't yet, I think we're still, uh, Andrew can still visit with you. So uh, <laughs> here are the organizations that were involved back there during our t tenure here. The Foxes, of course, and the Foxes are, there's a number of them here, and uh, we're celebrating 55 years as an organization, not all on campus. I think uh, a few years ago we got kicked off the campus, so, uh, <laughs> but we were still a very uh, socially active group. And uh, we love Upper Iowa, and a number of the guys came back to, uh, to be here this weekend, so thanks for that. I got Sigma, T Sigma Tau, Bush, Teats, Kappa, APO, Choir, Gamma, Pi Kappa, Ecology, Brotherhood, the I, and there's a number of I girls here. Uh, they should have been expelled from campus too. But, but I, I married one of them, so I can't say too much. The SOBs, that's a quite a crew too. The band, science club, vets, and campus wives. Now one, one real question is back in 1973, how many bars were in Fayette? Six. Foxes, you ought to know that one. Six. Six bars? Can you name them? B2B. 
beijo. Okay. You know, I didn't, I didn't go to many of them, so I don't know. I'm going to defer to you experts in the bar area. Mullins, too. Okay. So that was quite, that was quite a group. But uh, I'll just finish with saying that uh, I think the atmosphere on campus has been very positive. I've been here uh, most of the week for board meetings. There's a number of the trustees that are, that are here for breakfast with us this morning, and uh, things are going the right direction. We got a long ways to go yet, but we're making progress, and uh, we're just tickled that everybody came back for a for a great weekend. And uh, let's get a victory this afternoon. Go people. Thank you, Steve. It made me think of something, um, and this is—I I think this is a testament to Brian. When I graduated in 1975, there were 15 graduates, fellow graduates, with me that lived in Fayette, Iowa. I think that's a real testament. We lived and were around Upper Iowa most all of our lives. We chose to come here, and 15 of us graduated from Upper Iowa. I think that's a real testament. Um, at this time, I'd like to ask President Emeritus Dr. William Duffy to come forward and present the 50-year gifts to each of the class members who are present. Please come forward when we call your name, and following the program, we will have an entire class picture taken. Bill Adams. Merlin Bogey. Larry Borst. James Fuzzy Clark. <laughs> Kathy Denler Gabrielson. Pat Grennan. Pat is unable to be with us this morning. Steve Harms. J. 
Joan Stocks Nielsen. Jim Parsons. At this time, I'd like to invite UIU Interim President Kathy Franken to come forward to present our prestigious Alumni Awards. Our first award is the Service to University Award, which is presented to someone who provided exceptional stewardship to the university or demonstrated the spirit of Upper Iowa University's mission in environmental stewardship and or service. We are proud to recognize this year's recipient, Jason Berggren, class of 2017. Please come forward, Jason. As his nomination letter states, Jason is a peacock, a friend, and a patriot. He enlisted in the U.S. Navy in 1990 and spent nearly 30 years defending our country with assignments in Hawaii, Japan, Afghanistan, and beyond. A natural leader, Jason was deployed with the Defense Logistics Agency as the command senior enlisted leader and later retired in 2016. Jason earned his Associate of Arts degree in general business in 2017. He began connecting with his alma mater at alumni events and at the Iowa State Fair booth. Jason has also served as the keynote speaker at UAU's Veterans Day program. He's a proud UIU donor member. In addition, he was recently featured in a video project to share his own story of being an adult learner. This effort helped raise money for Upper Iowa student scholarships, specifically adult learners. The university appreciates all that you've done and continue to do. Congratulations, Jason. <laughs> Care to say a few words? Brenda told me I only had 20 minutes, so. <laughs> um, I don't know who was uh, here last evening, but uh, what an amazing event. Uh, the faculty never, never seems to disappoint, and um, as you see the, the year behind my uh, name there, kind of a late bloomer. So um, just really want to appreciate everybody who's uh, from a, a center graduate, not uh, any time spent on campus, uh, welcoming me in and my wife, uh, just a typical peacock. So 
I do have a few things I'd like to share. Um, my connection with Upper Iowa actually started in 1989. Uh, when I got, received a phone call, at that time I believe it was Coach McCready, uh, to come and wrestle for Upper Iowa. Um, didn't really know what I wanted to do with my life, didn't really want to, you know, go on to college, uh, so I joined the Navy. And when I look at this now, I'm like, jeez, what did I miss out on? <laughs> Coming back on campus a few years later and seeing it, it's like, what an amazing place. But there are a couple things that I'd like to, to call out. I probably wouldn't have met my wonderful wife, Maggie, had I come to Upper Iowa. And uh, I did a little research, kind of like Andrew was sharing with, with uh, some other speakers. I don't know what my wrestling would have been like, because when I did a little research, it was uh, Tyrone Fambro was in my seat. He was a three-time All-American and a national champion in my weight class, so uh, <laughs> it might not have went so well for me. <laughs> um, I left active duty in 2004 and um, joined the Navy Reserves, and uh, little did I know how important a college degree really was outside of, you know, being a doctor or accountant or anything like that. But even in the military, it was really, it was really tough to advance. So I just had this focus, I'm like, I don't, I looked at my wife, I'm like, I don't really care what my degree is in, I got to find a degree so I can compete and advance in this military. So I began looking around and, um, you know, obviously they, they take your transcript from the military and kind of put things together. And uh, 2019, strolling through the Iowa State Fair, I come across this upper Iowa booth, walked up spun a wheel, and this is the actual cup <laughs> from 2014. From that day forward, I knew that I wanted to be a peacock. Uh, went to the Quad City Center, uh, I think it was Marla, I can't remember her last name, it was Schultz. Uh, phenomenal person. Uh, we met, was able to take uh, my uh, military credits and convert them over, and uh, helped me understand the whole GI Bill and all that stuff. It was just an awesome experience. But again, yeah, it's still at that time I had not been on campus. So again, spinning a, a wheel for a simple plastic cup, it changed my life. And for that, I'm, I'm grateful. I enrolled in uh, March of 2015, uh, then graduated in 17. Um, during Ragbri of 2018, I won't share all those stories, um, <laughs> But I don't know, you know, those of you that aren't maybe in the area and understand what RAGBRAI is, but it's 10 to 15 cyclists crossing the state. Uh, some days are better than others. And, uh, but I remember seeing Upper Iowa jerseys riding by me. And as I would go on, I'd just yell, go Peacocks. Um, rolled into one of our, our pit stops. Um, I recall President at that time, Duffy, Dr. Duffy, and Andrew were two, I can't remember, I know there was a, probably a few others, but those are the two that I remember, and said, hey, you need to come and ride with us. So then the following year, 2019, my wife and I, uh, we joined Team Peacock and started with, uh, riding with them ever since. Uh, what an amazing group of folks. Uh, thanks, I actually get to share the table with Rick Knipper. Uh, he was one of our, they were one of our hosts this past year. It was a hot, hot day, we had a storm that evening. So really, certainly appreciate all of those who may not ride with us, but also support us along the way. Um, moving on, like I said, our, uh, our first visit to campus was in two 2019, uh, and it's like, wow. And then the stories come along the way uh, during uh, our first time on RAGBRAI, and they're talking about homecoming and the President's Ball and stuff. And when you come up in the summer, it's quiet and it's hot. But then when you come at homecoming time, people come home, and the colors up here are amazing. So it's always great to come back. We haven't missed a homecoming since. So it's, it's a lot of fun for us. Um, well, working with Daryl Grove and, and uh, Jackson Hike on a fundraising piece, they talked about that here a second ago. Um, I was asked, why do you do it? Why do you you know, participate? Why do you donate? Why do you just, the short answer is, I, I don't know. It's just who I am. The longer answer is, God gave me the ability to do things such as serve in the military, be a volunteer firefighter, EMT, 
you know, ride my bike across the state of Iowa and uh, give back a few bucks to an organization that really helped change my life. So I'd like to close by saying, uh, we all have something that we can do for Upper Iowa. Um, doesn't always take a lot of, uh, you know, time. Doesn't always take a lot of money. So please do what you can to help spread the word. And just by sharing the word of how great this university is, doesn't cost a penny. Feathers up, go Peacocks. <laughs>Next, it's my pleasure to introduce the 2023 Emerging Alumni Recipient. This award recognizes recent UIU grads for professional accomplishments or service to the university or community. The honored alumna must have graduated within the last 10 years. We're proud to recognize this year's recip recipient, Bridget Saffold. Please come forward, Bridget. Thank you so much for that. Um, first, before I even say a word, um, I just want to kind of recognize my um, family who's here with me because you really don't understand who I am without understanding who my family is. So y'all got to wave your hand when I call your name. <laughs> so my mom, Geneva. And I remember way back, as I say way back, 1995. <laughs> When I first started in, in healthcare as a CNA, I remember uh, I was just out of high school, I was very broke, and <laughs> my mom asked me, what do I need? So I needed a pair of white shoes for, <laughs> for nursing school, I needed a white jacket, and I needed a watch with a second hand on it. And so she made sure that I had any and everything I need to take that CNA class to be able to get the job I need. So she is the one that really started me on a great path to be who I am today. Um, my sister Stacy, she's here with her three children. So we have Nalea, Kyla, and Duquin. And my youngest daughter, Danae. She's kind of my partner in crime. She kind of, she likes to come to this stuff. And they got free food. And so that makes it even better. <laughs> and then Terrence, who's my, <laughs> wave your hand, Terrence. <laughs> he kind of supports any aspirations that I have. He's kind of there, always doing a lot of background work, making sure I'm staying focused and on track. And so I greatly appreciate him just kind of being there always. This award is especially, is really special to me because um, I started nursing when I was young, but I also wasn't able to complete the education that I really wanted. 
And so I worked for 10 years, well, close to 12 years as an LPN, a clinic nurse. And after raising my kids and where they got to be teenagers and able to cook their own food and kind of get to where they need to be, I was able to kind of to go back to school. And I finished my associate degree in nursing. But then I, after that, I said, I don't want to stop. I, like, there's, I want to do so much more. Like, I, I'm able to now. And so I researched online, what school can I go to? Well, there's all these online options by then, right? And so I wanted to go somewhere in Iowa. I wanted to be somewhere close to home just in case I needed to go to campus or I can, you know, be able to be somewhere more local. And Upper Iowa is what I found. And I was so grateful for the opportunities that I had through Upper Iowa. I did online, so I never actually came to campus while I was pursuing my education. But when I did, I just drove up here one day because graduation was virtual. It was during COVID. That was, I know, that's how I felt too. <laughs> because I hadn't attended a graduation since high school, so I was really looking forward to it. But because it was a virtual graduation, I decided to get in my car one day and just drive out to campus. And so when we got here, we was welcomed by Andrew, <laughs> who was so great to take us around campus in the snow. <laughs> And then uh, President Duffy, who welcomed us to his office, he sat with us and talked with us and became a friend. And we really appreciate you taking the time to do that. But not only that, I was able to study abroad in England. And that was kind of an amazing experience for, for me. And so then it even opened the doors now for me to have that conversation now with my children, my nieces and nephews of a great college where they can go pursue their dreams and their aspirations. And since graduating from college, I went from that clinic nurse to a clinic administrator um, at the same organization. And I've also been able to really grow that Focus on Diabetes initiative where we're now doing cancer work as well and supporting our community. So thank you so much for, for showing some love to me and to my family. Thank you so much. Our next award is Service to Community, presented to an alum who has provided exceptional volunteerism in their community. It's my pleasure to announce this year's honoree, William Bill Kunzman, class of 1969. Sadly, Bill passed away only weeks ago after a short battle with lung cancer. Here to receive the award on his behalf are his wife Phyllis, granddaughter Tanya Knighton, and her husband Philip. Tanya, please come forward. Bill earned his Bachelor of Science degree in 1969, majoring in mathematics and physics. For the last 23 years, Bill and Phyllis would winter in Mission, Texas. At age 85, one might assume he was enjoying the typical retirement community activities, but not Bill. He became involved in and took over Mabel's building mission, leading a group of retired senior citizens in building homes for impoverished families in Mexico. He spearheaded a team of volunteers who would drive nearly two hours twice each week, October through May, to build modest homes measuring 12 by 16 feet, accommodating up to six people and all their simple basic needs. Each home costs approximately $2,000, so he would also organize fundraising efforts to complete their project. He shared with friends once that he couldn't believe how much someone would pay for one apple pie. <laughs> for his years of service, it's estimated Bill was responsible for the completion of 540 homes, impacting nearly 3,000 young couples and children. Completely community-minded, Bill poured his heart and soul into countless organizations back in Iowa, including St. John Lutheran Church in Nashua, Strawberry Point JCs, Nashua City Council, Park Board, Ambulance Service, VFW Posts, Meals on Wheels, and more. It's our pleasure to shine light on this truly amazing person. Tanya, would you like to say a few words?
So I just want to thank um, Tom for nominating um, my grandfather. Um, he would really be happy to have been here. Um, so that's why we came in his honor. Um, this is something he, uh, I really wish he could have been here for. But I just want to say thanks to Upper Iowa. Uh, you guys have been great to us. Um, and we've enjoyed it. Thank you. Finally, I'm delighted to announce the recipient of the Professional Accomplishment Award. This award is presented to an alumnus who has demonstrated exceptional achievements in their professional career. This year's honoree is Carl Hargrave. Carl graduated with a Bachelor of Science degree in physical education in 1976. Some of you may recall him as a star defensive back on the Peacock football team, earning first team all-conference all four years. He was drafted by the Oakland Raiders soon after graduation and again, it's not in the program, but what people, a lot of people don't know, um, Carl came within a, a smidgen of making the Oakland Raiders. He got hurt on the final week of the preseason camp, tore up an ankle, and that was the only reason why he didn't make the Oakland Raiders. <coughs> he, um, after being drafted by the Raiders, uh, he returned to the UI campus and joined the Peacock coaching staff in 1980. Carl excelled at coaching football alongside some of the really great noteworthy mentors at the collegiate and professional level including Northwestern University, University of Iowa, University of Pittsburgh, University of Houston, Mesa Community College, the Minnesota Vikings, and the Arizona Cardinals. In 2015, Carl became the founder, owner, and director of Fit for Recovery, serving the Phoenix and Denver area. The aim is to inspire those fighting drug and alcohol addictions to turn their lives around through engagement in personal fitness. He works collaboratively with candidates who are desperate for change. What sets Carl's approach apart from other programs is that he inspires them from his own personal journey with addiction. He refuses, excuse me, he infuses his extensive knowledge of physical fitness and coaching with a drive to foster supportive team environment. His organization has impacted hundreds of men and women who have turned their lives around through a commitment to physical fitness and well-being. He's no longer coaching on the football field, rather he coaches on the field of life. Carl was unable to make the trip to Phoenix, Arizona today, but he did send us a video to share with all of you. However, before we do that, I have a personal story about Carl. Um, Carl came in as a freshman when I was a sophomore. And a lot of the people in the 70s and 80s knew that we played in the Iowa Conference and we were talking uh, some of the teams that were in the conference, but, um, you know, Wartburg and Luther are very close. They were our arch rivals. And in 1972, we were playing Wartburg at Wartburg. Uh, I don't believe there's anybody that we like beating more than the Wartburgers. Um, I always say that Carl and I scored all the points to that game. You know, Carl was really a Division I player playing on Division III. There's a reason why he ended up at Upper Iowa instead of the University of Iowa, but that's another story. Um, first of all, in the first quarter, Carl returned an interception for a touchdown. He got six points. I kicked the extra point. I got one. <laughs> um, then later in that second quarter, he returned a punt for a touchdown. He got six, I got one. And then to start the second half, Wardberg kicked off to us.
Carl returned the opening kickoff the second half, 90 some yards for a touchdown. He got six, I got one. <laughs> we, we won that game. Larry Mulholland blocked an extra point late in the fourth quarter. We won the game 21 to 20. And Carl and I scored all the points. He scored 18, I scored three. <laughs> But, um, it was, it was kind of like it, those of us who sometimes try to watch Iowa this year and over the past several years. Um, Steve knows this, Steve Harms, Larry Boris was on that team. We really had great defensive teams. Uh, our offense was a little bit challenged. Um, but anyway, Carl was a tremendous player, very humble. I'm sure that he's never ever told anybody <laughs> that he scored three touchdowns in one game on defense, okay? So tremendous individual. With that, let's look at his video. Hello, Upper Iowa. How you doing today? This is Carl Hargrave, AKA Peach. Hey, I wanna thank everyone. I'm really excited and blessed and, and, and just got that great feeling of gratitude that you thought highly enough of me and what I'm doing in my professional career now, outside of the football format that you've known me for, um, that, uh, that you've not only nominated me, but also picked me to, to the award of the Professional Achievement Alumni Award for 2023. And I thank you so much, all those that were involved in that. And I know that's a, it's, a, it's a great thing we got going at Upper Iowa University. I uh, wouldn't have changed it for the world. And, uh, you know, my business now, I'm not on the football field. I like to say that I'm coaching in the field of life. And what that means, what that comes to is that my business now is working with those that are mired in the throes of alcohol and drug addiction throughout the country. All right. My business is called Fit for Recovery. And what we initially do is we... Uh, we address the physical component in recovery. And, you know, and that's one of those statements that I'm gonna make, the body's made to move, and if the body's not moving, it's a bad day. So I thank you so much for thinking highly enough of me and what we're doing out here, because we are making a difference, and I thank you for that. Now on the flip side of that, what I'd like to say is that, you know, in 1972 to 76, there was a mass group of of alumni there at Upper Iowa that now you look back and see what they're doing today just as you did for me and, I, and I'm thankful for it but there are guys out there especially uh, students that were in the Black Student Union at Upper Iowa University difference makers game changers and they're doing it out here in this world and so um, hopefully this will be a kickoff to where uh, we can identify those those players out there those students that are making those plays today in lives and changing lives. And, you know, I just throw a name out there. There's a guy named Charles Jenkins who was out there. He didn't play football, but he was out there. And he's doing great things in his life right now. Ezekiel, um, uh, Zeke Morris, all right, he's out there doing great things. My sister, Christine Hargrave, doing great things. So, and I'll tell you this. The, the, the business that I have, Fit for Recovery, we have on my team is Travis Smith, who is an alum of Upper Iowa University. His dad and I were teammates, and we coached together at, at different places on the college level. But I tell you what, let's dig into that, and I'm really excited about having this opportunity to, to, to help, help you launch this platform. So thank you so much. It's a wonderful thing. Now let's talk about football. And unfortunately, I'm not gonna be able to be there for this, uh, uh, for the award, as well as to celebrate the victory. You know, we claim our victories early. Uh, celebrate the victory that the Peacocks are gonna have over, I think it's McKendree State. Not sure who it is, but I know this. They're gonna get big, they're gonna be proud. Those feathers are gonna be up, and that pad level's gonna be down. We're gonna go out and win the dog on that. So, hey. Be strong, Peacock. All right, so I want to thank everyone. Uh, you're doing great things at Upper Iowa University, and uh, I look forward to, to visiting the campus again here pretty soon. So thank you again. 
Carl Hargraves, feathers up, be guy strong. Any wonder why Carl's successful? <laughs> Let's give a big round of applause for all of our award recipients today. Thank you very much. Special thanks also to our Alumni Award Selection Committee. As you can imagine, this is not an easy task, considering we have amazing alumni doing incredible things all over the world. Committee members who are present, would you please stand to be recognized? Danny John, Jan Henkes, Pam Whitmore is on the committee, unable to be here today, Cindy Waters, Tom Petchy, and Tiffany Stauffer. in preparing various aspects of homecoming, including the program that we just have had, the Al Alumni Association Board of Directors. The board's mission is to promote Peacock Goodwill, create a dynamic alumni program, build loyalty among our alumni family, increase involvement in the alumni, and generate support for the university. And if anyone in here would like to, in the future, join the Alumni Association, don't hesitate to contact one of us. The board members who are present here today, uh, I would like to recognize. Again, uh, Board President Danny John, please stand. Vice President Tom Weber. <laughs> Dan Hankus. Is Bill here, Bill Rose? Uh, Bob Kruger. Serena Demlo, <coughs> Tiffany Stouffer, Neil Wallace, Kevin Lounsbury, Aaron Calkins, and Regina Panuska. And of course, the two of us. <laughs> I'd also like to thank um, our, our alumni staff uh, are tremendous. Um, they provide so much help for us, support for us, Andrew and, and Brenda and that whole group. Um, they work behind the scenes tirelessly uh, and do so many things for us and uh, don't get near the uh, thanks and recognition that they deserve. So a big round of applause for us. At this time, I'm going to turn it over to Andrew Winthy, who is the Vice President for External Affairs. Andrew? All right, thank you, Tom. I'm really proud uh, to have been with UIU for 18 years now. I can't believe I started back in 2005. Uh, also proud to be an alum as well, having earned my master's degree from Upper Iowa in 2012. Uh, I want to join in offering my sincere congratulations to our 50-year class. It's an incredible milestone. And since, of course, not everybody could attend, I do want everyone to draw their attention to the event program on your table, which does include a complete listing of this class. It's my privilege this morning to shine a spotlight on the Upper Iowa University Heritage Society. This society was created to recognize and honor alumni and friends of Upper Iowa University who have included UIU in their estate plans or who have made some other type of planned gift. On the screen behind me, we proudly recognize all of our heritage members. These individuals believe in Upper Iowa's mission and want to ensure the university's valuable educational programs and services will continue for future generations. The Heritage Society celebrates commitments made today that will benefit UIU's students, faculty, and programs in the future. Would any members of UIU's Heritage Society who are present with us today please stand to be recognized? No 
and we're always learning. I will remind you, in January 2020, UIU introduced a new offering to our alumni. Uh, it's called Free Will. It's a free online resource used to create a legally valid will in less than 20 minutes. So far, nearly 200 of our alumni have taken advantage of this tool. And of those 200, over 45 bequests have been committed to the university. This year, in the last fiscal year, we added 14 in total new members of our Heritage Society, uh, pledging gifts uh, exceeding $1.3 million uh, to leave behind to UIU, which I think is pretty amazing. If you are interested at any time in learning about free will or how to join our Heritage Society, uh, myself and other members of our alumni team are happy to talk anytime. So happy homecoming, everyone. And at this point, uh, I'm pleased to turn it over to Kathy Franken for some closing comments. Uh, Kathy's our UIU interim president and chief financial officer. Kathy. Thanks, Andrew. And thanks, Tom and Ron, for your service to the Alumni Association and also being our MCs for today. Let's give them one more round of applause. Thank you all for attending this wonderful event. I've been fortunate enough, Andrew's got me beat, um, but I've been part of Upper Iowa University for 15 years. First working at our Waterloo Center and then moving on and leading our enrollment and our finance areas. And now it is my honor to serve as UIU's interim president and chief financial officer. UIU continues to be innovative by offering quality educational opportunities that are affordable and accessible to our students. I hope while, you are on time, while your time on campus today, you will have an opportunity to engage with those students. I can tell you their experience, while different in some ways, is very similar to what you experienced during your time here, in that UIU offers a safe, a positive, and a family-like atmosphere to our students. We hope every time you come back to visit us, you continue to feel like a member of our ever-growing Peacock family. Before I take you kind of through what you can expect for the rest of your day today, I want to say a couple of thanks to some groups. First, we had thanks before, but again, if we can please thank the many departments who work hard to make homecoming a success each year. Let's give each of our team members a round of applause to show our appreciation. I also want to thank our Board of Trustee members who are with us today. These individuals dedicate a great deal of time and energy in their role of trustees. Would you please stand so we can recognize you as well? And finally, I want to take a few moments to thank Bill and Sharon Duffy for their incredible leadership and for their passion that they have shown for UIU over the past 15 years. I can tell you that your legacy at UIU will last well beyond your well-deserved retirement. However, before the official retirement, in his role as President Emeritus, Dr. Duffy continues to assist to meet UIU's fundraising goal of $8 million. I am excited to report today over $5.1 million has been raised so far towards that goal. So, if you have not heard from Dr. Duffy yet, don't worry, you will. <laughs> Thank you, Bill and Sharon. <laughs> Homecoming kicked into full gear last evening with the 11th annual fundraising ball. Thank you to all that were able to attend the event. We are currently over 185,000 of our $200,000 goal. There is time through the weekend to still contribute and help us push towards that goal of 200,000. 
Uh, in the 11-year history of the President's Ball, nearly $1.5 million has been raised for UIU, providing important funding that positively impacts the lives of our current and our future students. Okay, now on to homecoming. Following our program today, you are invited to attend our homecoming parade. We will showcase the class of 1973 and our alumni award winners. Uh, for those individuals, you can find your transportation in front of Garby Hall with the lineup beginning at 1130. Homecoming serves as a reminder of how UIU has been an instrumental part of your life. We are happy that the celebration brings together generations of individuals with a common home. I'd encourage each of you here today to consider the impact UIU has had on your life and how you might pay forward. UIU presents many opportunities and initiatives throughout the year for our alumni and friends to make a gift. I ask you to consider starting or increasing your giving to this important institution that we all love. Thank you, happy homecoming, and go Peacocks. Thank you, Kathy. Before everyone departs, I'll remind our 50-year class to come forward at the conclusion for a group photo. Those of you who are participating in the parade, please promptly make your way to the west side of Garby Hall, the far side of Garby. Uh, and everyone else, please make your way to downtown Fayette for the parade, which starts at noon. Also, don't miss the alumni tailgate at the alumni house starting at 12.30 after the parade. Be sure to stick around for the football game. Kickoff is at 3 o'clock. The rain is gone. No reason not to go to that game. And thanks again for spending your morning with us. Go Peacocks! Peacocks.